if you've ever lived abroad or spent time... Sorry, I just have that mint and I was just so tasty. <laughs> moving it around. It's still there. I'll put it under the tongue. Go on, get it under Now, if there. you've ever spent time in a new country, it's understandable that you can sometimes adopt the local twang. I do it all the time yeah. when I go to America. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. I love it. I like it so when people good. go abroad to like the continent and you, they're still speaking in English, but they speak in the <laughs> accents. They go, yeah. hey, that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> so just six, basically Gino. But six weeks ago, Zoe Coles from Lincolnshire woke up speaking in a Welsh accent, having no links to there and have never even visited the country. As she continues to look for answers as to why this has happened to her, Zoe joins us alongside Dr Zara, uh, Sarah, sorry, uh, to explain the science behind this unusual Occurrence. So Zoe, it's unbelievable, Zoe. What happened to you? What, what? I know. So, a year ago, I was diagnosed with functional neurological disorder. Yeah. Uh, six weeks ago, seven weeks now, uh, I woke up speaking like this. C can you just explain what, what F, uh, FND, functional neurological disorder, is? So, so is it, would you have, and Zara, feel free to chip in with this. D is it because you had a blow to the head or like. No, I woke up with slurred speech. Um, and the neurologist at the hospital, I went straight to the hospital and he said, stress, uh, trauma, past trauma maybe, um, you can go home now. That's what he said to me. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So then you were left with this accent. I mean, it's quite a nice accent, isn't it? What did you sound like before? Was it quite RP? What did you sound like? Mm, quite East Midlands. But, really? Yeah, but with a bit of a Kent twang, because I'm originally from Kent. Yeah. OK. Mm. And then when you first... When you first had this, it, it manifested itself in a slightly Germanic accent, is that right? I don't know what... I don't know what accent it was. There's Awful some, is what it was. People were saying that you sounded, you sounded slightly German, is that yes, right? Yes, well, yeah, a bit of everything, uh, I think. Let's have, Should a, we have li a listen. Let's have a listen. Mm. Today you want to thank your lucky stars that you have not woken up like this. I don't know how, I don't know why, but I speaking like this now, uh, last night and today, and I don't like it. I mean, you poor thing, because it sounds almost comedic, but of course, I mean... It's funny. A... I, right. Yeah, it's hilarious, and we laughed. This has been my medicine through all of this, has been laughter. Yeah. We take the mickey out of ourselves, of, of me. I've got to, because I get that's how I get through. And let's have a, just a quick listen to how you sounded normally before. Uh-huh. So, last night, my speech came back. Um, I didn't want to jump the gun too much, so I left it until this morning, and, yeah, I've, I'm talking fluently and... It's like nothing ever happened. That is bizarre. So just so, so time scale, so you 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 sounded sl slightly German, and then you went back to normal. No. So I what was that? When was the, when was that clip? That was previously. That's oh, how. Okay. That's a clip to show people how I normally would speak, because people think, right, you're having me on. No, I'm not having you on. So is that put, you putting on your old accent, basically? I no. No, that's, that's the, a previous video. That. Right, that's a okay. previous video. Sorry, I do video diaries. Every day. I understand. To, yeah, since I've been diagnosed. And uh, is there any connection to Wales or Germany no. or anything like that? No, I've never been. I'm going to go, because I promised my TikTok followers I would go and visit them. <laughs> <laughs> and so how is your, your family and friends? How do, do, they, do they like the accent? Uh, my fiancé loves it. He says I'm a better person. It's like I'm... Not that I was evil before, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm more confident. I, I used to be quite shy and quite held back, but... I'm quite confident. So it's actually, cha this, this yes, accent changed me. has changed you as yeah. a person. The Welsh must be very happy because I'm happy and I'm confident. Oh. So you sort of, I guess you don't want it to go back, do you? I, mean... I don't know. Um, I don't know what I used to sound like anymore. When I listen to videos, I... It's hard for me. It's just... Sure. Should I, like, sit in bed and just think, who am I? What's yeah. going on? All the time. Does it have an effect on you mentally? Yeah, it does. So people see the happy me and stuff, but sometimes at home... You know, I'm at home, sometimes I go to bed and I cry and I just... Because I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Just... OK, so let's bring Sarah in. So, so can you explain FND for us to start with? So, uh, functional neurological disorder is a problem where the brain uh, is having difficulty sending and receiving information. If you think of the brain as a bit of a, a computer, um, there's no problem with the hardware itself, but the software, it, there's a problem somewhere in the software. So doing scans and things sometimes come back as completely normal, right. but there's something in there that's you can't um, detect. sending the, the message incorrectly. 
Um, and, and in this case, it, it might sound something a bit like foreign accent syndrome, which is a, 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 a separate syndrome, but that may be connected to so, the FND. But Zoe's not been uh, diagnosed with that, has she? You've not been formally diagnosed, from what no. I understand, but that's something that you've been researching yourself and, yeah. and, and thought that that might be 150 cases since 1907. That is insane. I know. I know. So, Sarah, anything she can do? I mean, what's the next, what's the next stage? So, I, I think, you know, with this, what we need to do is rule out underlying causes because um, for foreign accent syndrome, there can be um, brain injuries that can trigger it off. So, things like strokes are probably the most common cause, um, head injuries, so trauma to the brain, tumours, um, severe migraine, psychological disturbances, um, developmental disturbances. So, the, the you know, it's, it's such a big array of things that could trigger this so off. Have you, have you had tests for any of those? No. Okay. I had a CT scan when I was diagnosed with FND, but I haven't had any other... And is your doctor taking this seriously? Because the fact that you haven't had any of these tests, have you actually asked for these tests? Uh, I asked for an MRI, but they don't refer you to an MRI, for an MRI. They refer you to a neurologist. I asked to go to a specific neurologist, but they declined me because they are here in London and I can't... I'm out of the catchment area. So I'm back to a different it's one. It's worrying, though, because obviously it's, it's quite funny. She's got a different accent. But what if there's something underlyingly wrong here? Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I agree, you know, when there's something that could potentially be underlying it, um, we do want to investigate it further. And as you said, Dermot, it's a very rare condition, you know, 150 cases. Um, but we do get the headlines every now and then because it's a very fascinating yeah. um, topic for people to read about. But, um, I, you know, we had a headline about George Michael once having this. Yeah. and having had uh, gone into a coma for three weeks and he, he woke up with a West Country accent. And most cases, it's temporary. It goes back to normal again after. But in some cases, it can be permanent. So what advice would you give? So who should you go and see if she's not getting the answers she needs from her own doctor? Yeah, I, I think... Always, my, my opinion is, is if you aren't getting on, either getting on with a, a certain GP or you don't feel that someone's taking your condition seriously, it's always to get a second opinion where possible. And in this case, you know, there are speech therapy um, and speech and language therapy, therapists that can help. You know, even counselling just to help you cope yeah. with what's going on is, mm. is, is something that can be considered whilst you're waiting for... Um, for a neurological referral. Well, Zoe, you are so positive. So it's lovely that you are being so yeah, positive. I'm trying, yeah. Um, thank so. you for telling your story. And thank, thank you. Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Uh